one of the surest signs of spring is when the boys of summer are back at it getting ready for uh, the Major League Baseball season opening day just around the corner and it's hard to hit the curveball in business and life which makes it a great segue for the fitness curveball. It's so tough to stay on track we need a new playbook which we will discover today with author, speaker, former Yankee prospect Tim Boris as we zero in on the fitness curveball. Tim, uh, you were a Yankee prospect, a draft pick of the New York Yankees. You were from the uh, baseball hotbed of the, the lower mainland, Fraser Valley in British Columbia. Tell us the story. I think that's, that's where we got to start. I mean, this is the book that you wrote, and I just love it. The fact that, you know, you can hit a grand slam in health and happiness no matter what life is throwing at you. But you had a lot thrown at you when you were on your way to pursuing your field of dreams. So that, that, I think that's a great place to start. What happened? Yeah, I uh, played baseball my whole life and uh, had arm issues later in my career. I was drafted. I was. I thought I was going to be in the show and I, that's that was my plan. I had no other thoughts in mind other than that. And reality hit me hard when I realized that my arm was just not holding up and I had to make other plans after that, and it was really tough for the. First you're a little time. kid. You're dreaming of who are your yeah. heroes? I mean, who are the heroes back then uh, for you? That was the surreal part. Is um, the Yankees were my heroes, like Don Mattingly and all, like the whole, all the Yankees from past, Babe Ruth and those guys. I just loved it, and to get drafted by the Yankees was a dream come true. And How proud were your parents? And they still have the letter posted <laughs> in the framed in their in their house. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's uh, it was it was amazing. Well, and because I'm you know we're always uh, talking about stories of reinvention, real life. How about we go to the day when you realize the dream is over? Walk us through that day. Yeah, it was, it was probably when I after I graduated from university because I was on scholarship and I realized that I wasn't. I wasn't getting the call to go to the, the minor league camps and I was just, I was done school. There was no other opportunities for me at baseball. I couldn't throw a ball at that point. My arm was so sore and I graduated university early, uh, mm -hmm. didn't get the double degree I was working towards because I was just so burnt out and I went traveling for a while to find myself as so many young oh, people did, do. Did you really? Where'd, I, where, where'd you go? I backpacked through Europe for four months and uh, that was that was really an awakening for me because I had been an identity in baseball and when I wasn't in baseball anymore I was sitting alone on my own in Europe should have been backpacking and enjoying myself and I realized that I had no idea how to be a person outside of baseball. I had no I didn't, I didn't know what my identity was. I had found it hard to talk to people. And so I would sit there and it took me probably, I was there gone for four and a half months. It probably took me a good month before I somehow broke out of the shell. And I, I remember sitting, it was in Santorini, Greece. Beautiful sunset, sitting in a backpacker bar overlooking the ocean. Everyone's having fun and I was sitting in the corner, miserable and bored and I remember say, saying, looking around and saying, I need to do something. And, and I, I got up and it was one of the hardest things I did. I got up and I walked over to a table of people that I had no idea. And I thought they knew each other. They were old mm -hmm. friends and talking. And I just walked up and awkwardly said, I'm Tim. <laughs> and introduced myself to them. And So at the risk of being a complete loser, you yeah. made a move. Yeah, I thought I was breaking okay. into this like group of friends and they're like, oh, we just met each other like 20 minutes ago and 
date, we had this great conversation. And, and, and who knows? They were traveling too. They were all backpackers. And for some reason, I didn't think that. And okay. I was just... I ended up having one of the most amazing trips. Caught the travel bug. Came back and worked in Vancouver for a couple of years uh, in the fitness industry. And then saved up enough money to travel Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji for a year. And had an even more amazing time. Wow. So, Tim, as we... You know, the thing is, is is there's the epiphany uh you know in, in the greek islands of well, maybe there is a life after baseball and i want people to think about this you know whatever you're into in terms of a transformation a crossroads right tim whatever we want to call it there's usually this epiphany that happens right sure. and you wake up and realize hey there is a whole other world and somehow it took you to this book and a whole new career so how does that play out? And tell us a little bit more about the fitness curveball and, and what's involved there and what you discovered. Because I know so many people want to reinvent themselves physically and you've actually mastered a process of doing that. Absolutely. Yes. And the, the whole the concept of the fitness curveball comes from people want to get in shape and lose weight. Right. That's the number one goal that people have going into any gym. Mm -hmm. They're like, I need to get fit and lose weight. Okay. That's excellent. I say, you know you need to exercise regularly and eat well, and they're like, yes, I know that. And I said, why aren't you doing it? Right. So it's not about fitness and nutrition, it's about mindset and habits. So those, I've created four pillars of performance, I call them. Okay. Number one is mindset, number two is habits, three is movement, number four is fuel. And so movement and fuel are different than fitness and nutrition because there's more to it than just exercise. Four, four pillars, kind yeah. of like circling the base paths in baseball. Absolutely. So number one, let's start there, mindset. Mindset. Mindset is everything. It's the lens or filter through which you see the entire world. Let's do quick rapid fire, lightning round, 30 seconds or less. Mindset, if you were to explain anyone interested in the fitness curveball right now, what kind of mindset's required? Looking at the world in a different way. Looking at where you are now, where you want to be, and saying, how am I going to get to that point? And how do, I, how do people in that situation look at the world? Mindset is first base, second base is habits? Habits. Do tell. Once you have the right mindset, it's a matter of putting simple strategies in place that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Give us one. Morning routine. Okay. One example of the morning routine. I have a, what I call a one minute, or mobility minute. As soon as your feet hit the floor in the morning, move your body, every joint in your body, for one minute. Like how do you do it? D demonstrate right now. How so would you do a mobility st minute? Stand up and start at the head and I just move my neck for a few seconds, my shoulders, arms up overhead couple of rotations, maybe do a couple of little squats. And what does that do, Tim, for the for the body? Gets your mind engaged, gets okay. your mind and body engaged. I call it the pre-flight checklist for the day. Okay, so, so you don't reach for the remote control and watch last night's highlights? No. Okay, got it. Num base number three, you're rounding third. Yeah, movement. Movement, so, rounding move third, heading for home. Yeah, the movement is, you start with the mobility minute, but then throughout the day, the human body was meant to move. We sit for 15 hours or more a day and then we expect our body to perform when we go to the gym and we wonder why we get injured or we struggle with results so 80 percent of the health benefits of fitness come outside the gym it's how we move our body each day okay so rounding third heading for home the brown eyed handsome man hits home plate fuel 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 give me fire give me that which i desire metallica absolutely okay good yes you you are what you eat literally Everything you eat becomes the cells of your body, and it's not about counting calories or weighing your food, it's about real food. If your great-grandmother couldn't identify it as a food, don't eat it. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So the Tim Boris fuel for the morning is what? The fuel for the morning? Oh, yeah. what I eat? Yeah, exactly. I have a variety of things. Sometimes it's leftovers from dinner the night before, sometimes it's uh, an organic corn-based cereal that I have with some coconut milk because I don't do dairy. Okay. But yeah, it's, it, for, that's for me. But for everyone, it's going to be different. Okay. All-encompassing message, Tim. If we were to wrap up everything that you've learned along this journey that, that took you to this moment where you could write this book, go out there and inspire so many thousands of people on their physical reinvention, their mental reinvention journey, what would you share with everyone watching? 
change happens in an instant, but the process takes time to implement. So when pe people, one thing I say to people in our uh, facility is that you won't change unless you're ready to change. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to change, it happens. Just like that. Yeah. After that, roadblocks and barriers don't exist anymore because you still have implementation to happen and there'll be challenges for sure. But people try and do things and do the actions without changing their mindset first. And that's why they continually struggle. And unless the mindset changes, nothing will change. So just before we wrap up, I, I told Tim, we've got to have a little bit of fun and levity and take advantage of his baseball background. Top three sports movies of all time. Ah, oh, Bull Durham for sure. Right. Especially Loves. the interview teaching on the bus. you got to work yes. on your cliches. We do. I, I do, yes. Right? The cliches are all part of it. They are. you got to <laughs> take it one game at a time. Okay, yeah. Bull Durham. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Slap shot. Just love it. Right. It's, it's fantastic. And uh, I, I, there are all kinds of great movies out there, but uh, Major League is funny. I really I really like that. Um, oh, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And exactly. so all kinds of just funny baseball analogies in there. But uh, yeah, Bull Durham's got to be my favorite. Okay. Well, listen, congratulations, Tim, on the fitness curveball. Uh, if in Bull Durham, Kevin Costner... And Nuke Lelouch had to take it one game at a time. Uh, Tim, the good Lord willing, everything's going to be work out because he <laughs> is just happy to help the ball club. And Tim, you've been a great help here Thank you on the so Reinvention much. Chronicles. Wonderful guy. Tim Boris in the fitness curveball, and hopefully some of these ideas will help you recreate and reimagine uh, the business of the life and the career that you deserve.